Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith and we're in here. We're getting ready to do a little bit of walling and I, I really wasn't going to make this a, a video here, but I posted a few pictures of me just prepping this out uh, on Facebook and uh, the, the gang started going, uh, video, video, started to sound like a Trump uh, convention here. <laughs> uh, anyhow, I went ahead and uh, I got my my NEX6 here that I like to add into my screen here I'm going to try to remember to hit the right button and switch to coordinate the uh, arc shots and let's see how we do alright now let's uh, I'm gonna bring you in a little closer to show you a little bit about the project we're working on it is a wheel that holds these carbide faced uh, uh, teeth and this thing chews up stumps uh, like a stump grinder and anyway that set of uh, teeth got loose on the wheel and then wore it out so I'm gonna bring you in closer and let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you what I've done already to start the process of prepping this out and we'll take it from here I gotta get my torches over here I want to warm this up slightly uh, just because I, I don't like to just come in, strike an arc, and start walling on something without the part around the area around the localized work part of the, the piece. I want to I want to warm up a little bit more of the project and um, and then that way when things cool down and everything else the uh, the parts aren't wanting to pull away from each other uh, because your your <clears throat> your concentration on heat in one local area uh, cooling down at a much faster rate than the rest of it uh, was never was never heated up and uh, that cools down faster contracts and that actually creates uh, uh, havoc at times all right let's bring you in and check this out this wheel here and you can see how many different uh, let's, let's see there's a uh, uh, one two three four four eight eight sets 16 16 16 different teeth are bolted on here there's two carbide tips on each one so that's 30 32 teeth they're going to be going around on this uh this wheel this wheel plate um it's kind of let me see here got a got a scale here okay it's one inch thick it's um i don't know probably a good between 50 and 70 pounds all right Let's bring you in close. I'm going to show you what I've I've done here because these are wallered out holes. So I I ground the burrs off of this outside surface here, and then I took my countersink and I set it up in the drill press, the Sibley there, and I took away that material so I could come down. Um, it's probably that with right in there in the root it's probably close to about 200,000 slightly wider than 3 16 of an inch but I'm gonna come in here with uh, so I'm gonna use 7018 I like uh, Excalibur uh, Lincoln rod it really ignites right and it, it really I've just never been dissatisfied with 7018 Lincoln Excalibur rod 1 8 rod and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna start down at the root and I'm going to weld in all the way around. I'm going to stitch it, and then I'm going to I'm going to close it on this one side, and I'll do that to both of these. Then I'll clean all the slag off it. I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to clean the slag off the other side, and then I'll do the same thing. I'll, I'll I'll bring and work my way from that root on up out of the hole. Once we get both of these holes filled up to the top, then I'm going to make a cover pass that's going to come around here and cover the face the face of these two um, teeth that clamp together that face right there has got to sit smooth and level on here just like you see just like you see on this area here this area here all of these that that face has got to sit perfectly flat on there and then uh, the the torque of the bolts that gives you the sheer strength of whatever I'm sure that they're grade 8 or better bolts there and that sheer strength is what actually holds this in place so those two flat surfaces good tight holes 
torqued down. That's what holds those in place. You let them loose, and then it starts chewing up on both sides. You got valleys and grooves, and and uh, these things were were wallowed out pretty good. Okay, we got our torch here, and we're just gonna fire it up here. All right, we're just warming up the general area here. Uh, we're gonna give uh, we're gonna give our our camera post over here a little uh, welding glove uh, protection there from melting out. We're starting to feel the temperature around on the back side. <clears throat> It'll get a lot warmer after we start welding and we start flipping this part around. But I want the initial weld bead in this area not to be so extreme. And we're going to be focusing a lot of weld in such a little tiny pocket, little hole here, and then this face over here. So compared to the rest of this thing, it's going to be pulling and contracting quite a bit. Yeah, I couldn't hold my hand on that if I wanted to. And <clears throat> that's all we're looking for. All right, we're gonna turn on our welder here now. And now about 120 amps is all I'm gonna run this because I'm actually gonna, most of this is gonna be like simulated welding a vertical on there. And we do have to do one thing is we have to clean out that inside hole there with the uh, die grinder there. So we're gonna do that right now. Okay, this is actually the uh, very first little project I get to use one of my uh, Juniper uh, uh, pneumatic uh, little air tools there. And, uh, I don't really need to take out a whole bunch of material. I just want to get nice bare material in there, okay? Now we know that there's no grease, oil, dirt, or whatever. When we start welding this in here, we're gonna, this is all gonna start smoking out here because this has got all kinds of tree sap and all kinds of that stuff on there. Okay, the other tool that we're gonna be using uh, is my uh, scaler or my uh, needle gun. And uh, I like to use this uh, to get in there and knock out all the flux uh, little pockets and stuff like that so we don't have to use too much hammer all right and that that fitting bleeds a little bit so i leave that unplugged until i'm ready to use it all right let me uh let me get the camera set up here and uh, we're going to start filling in this uh two holes here the first thing i like to do is i got a good ground that's already on there and I got my stinger lead just draped over the table uh, just so there's only like two foot of it that's free. That way I, when I'm holding my uh, stinger there it kind of just feels light like a pencil and then I got pretty good control on it. All right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna I steady it with my left hand. I do that a lot when I'm getting ready to start out with something that I want to precisely put it there. I'm gonna strike an arc on it and then I'm gonna work my way slowly around that inside board. I'm gonna pick this hole here to start off with. I advance a little bit and then I kind of roll it backwards into the hole a little bit. Hold the arc real, real close, short. Come right around on top of that. You can you can continually weld 7018 as long as you're in the vertical and that flux is flowing down through the hole. 
Okay. There we go. We close up that one. Okay. Now this rod is too hot to hold again. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to sacrifice that rod. I'm going to get a brand new one so that I can do the same thing to the other side. That was only two passes around and I was able to close that 5 8 plus hole up. Okay, here's the other one. Now just that heat from that first one, I can already tell that this is a little bit more fluidy. Trying to hold a little closer arc. That just controls the heat down a little bit more. You can see it struggling a little bit more to close that. I might lose it if I'm hanging out there too long. Okay. We have those two closed up. All right, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead. I wanna lift the plate up, flip it over, and uh, we'll attack that from the other side. Okay, I'm gonna set this rod over here with that one. Later on, we might use those on part of the facing rod there. Okay, I just flipped it over, and uh, and you can see this is flux that came down through. There was one wrap that was rolling over the edge of the well, and then right after I hit that center of the hole, it uh, put its last little bit of blob of uh, flux down underneath there. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my scaler here, or my needle gun, and we're going to go ahead and pop that that uh, slag out of there. Let me bring you out a little bit. I don't want none of this to get in your eyes. It's not as bad. Stainless steel flux has got to be the bit worst that uh, can pop and get in your eyes and stuff like that. You really need to have your safety glasses on. You should have it on for all, all flux just because it's hot. You don't want to melt the skin on your eye. myself an air nozzle here so we can blow that out I'll zoom you back in all right now I'll go ahead and I'll take a picture down in so you can actually see it's almost oh, it, oh you would have would have thought I had almost a block there to let that puddle sit on there, but it, it's almost flush in there. It's really nice. It came out good. I'm really happy with that. Okay, now let's go ahead and get set up because I want to continue on it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start uh, down in here, and I might actually I'm gonna take a block and I'm gonna put it underneath the far side of this because I want it to pitch up because I don't want to go down in there and start welding and then create a slag. I'm going to start on one side of it and I'm going to work my way to the other side of it and with the plate pitched up at an angle um, I'll be able to uh, do a vertical style weld and know that I'm getting 100% uh, weld surface and not leaving a pocket in there. Okay, same thing again. I'm getting real comfortable on it. Because these first, this, this first pass on both sides is pretty, pretty crucial that you get in there and you just don't, you don't make any pockets. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to weld in that direction there towards the center of the hub. A little too gentle on my striking and uh, the amperage is down.
just staying with it, stay, sticking with it, keeping that arc. 7018, you have a, uh, a difference between your flux and, and your molten puddle, and you got to get used to watching those and making sure that even though your flux is coming up over it, that you're not losing or keep, you're not dragging your rod out of that molten puddle. All right, here's the other side. Strike it on the concrete here to get me a break. There we go. The rod is a little warm in my hand, but I am guiding it so I don't come out of that puddle. Got to stay right down in there. Make the flux come out over the top. There we go. Okay. Grab my scaler, we'll, we'll blast those out of there. Okay, I'm gonna bring you, bring you in and I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna take a picture with my, uh, my camera, my still, so that you can actually see down in there. But there, there's, everything is uniform and walled all the way around in here. There is no little pinholes, there's no porosity, there's no, this rod just, just, it's awesome. I, uh, I don't know what else to say, you know, I'm, I don't pr promote a whole bunch of things there, but, you know, especially, it, you know, Lincoln's not contacting me for this promotion, but this Excalibur rod gives you this kind of performance. All right, now I can go ahead and lay this plate down because um, the uh, I'm washed out in in both sides, and it's no there's no sharp corners, no holes that I have to get into. This is a, a shallow, and I'll be able to start in the weld and then work my way around. And I'm going to do a little on each side until I bring this out flush. Okay, I got my chair so I can sit here and comfortably. It's going to be a little bit of I mean, they're short little bursts, but just to sit there, be comfortable, and you can see down up and take, I, I have probably that much lead, okay? Just hanging freely. So it's like a pencil. Just keep, it, it's important to stay comfortable with any kind of welding. But it, it, it's amazing that the accuracy you can have with stick welding, um, if you just get comfortable and into, this, into the spot here. Okay, um, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna touch off in the center and then I'm gonna make a circle. So it's just gonna be like rosette welding, um, both both of these holes now. Okay, I'll get another picture of that. Okay, we flipped it back over and we just uh, took and knocked out our flux. There's a picture of what the original weld looks like from the top. We saw it from the bottom, but here's what it looks like from the top after I just took the flux off. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna start in the middle and we're gonna go up and we're gonna we're going to create three, three pass. we'll probably bring it out flush. We're three passes on the other side, about one pass left them being level. So we'll bring this one up now, three passes.
Okay, we flipped this over and we ran a pass each on finishing off the uh, fourth fourth pass, I believe it was, it took us to fill the holes on each side. And now we're grabbing uh, a couple more rods here. Um, that one's junk, okay, this is a good one. Okay, um, now we're ready. This one here, we're, we're actually gonna be coming up. This side here actually shows a little bit more destruction all the way back into here and then and then come on into here. Uh, so, here we go. I'll get right back on there and burn right into that flux there. I'm just trying to hold it in there a little too close. Okay, now I'm going to make it pass right along the edge here. Alright, that came out pretty good. Let's uh let's needle gun it and, and take a look at our start and stop area right there. That's, that's not real bad. Okay, I'm gonna take a picture of that. Okay, we got some loose flux there and I'm gonna have to knock that loose and get it out of the way. Make sure, making sure that I get a good... That is looking pretty good. No flies on that. Okay, I think that's, that's looking pretty good. I'd say we got enough material on there. Okay, we gotta let this thing cool down to room temperature. And uh, I think that's, a, that's about it. I'm not gonna bother taking any of these little divots. There's plenty of them around. Um, I don't wanna add any more than I think needs to be added to complete the repair of the surfaces and the two holes for this this one cutter.